Are you serious? Are you serious? That is a picture. I want to thank Troy of North Carolina. That is a picture that was taken on spaceweather.com of the comet Ison. This thing is coming closer and closer to the sun. Folks, this is only late September. Wait till this comet, late November, when it gets its closest point to the sun, and it literally is going to be a spectacular, uh, absolute sign in the heavens. I've got some unbelievable information I want to share with you right now. And, and I want you to also really focus with me on the timing of this comet and the swarm of earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park. There is something biblical going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ. Grab some coffee, go ahead and pause it, go brew it, come back and open your Bible to Luke chapter 21. Then I'm going to read to you some scientific information and some prophetic revelation. All right, the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 11, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. All right, earthquakes. In different places, famines, pestilence. You've had all these cricket apocalypse going on in Oklahoma and in Kansas. You've had massive locusts in Madagascar. And locusts followed John F. Kerry, our Secretary of State, to Egypt when he went to meet with Mohammed Mercy. Now you've had this massive 7.8 earthquake hit Pakistan just 48 hours after the Muslims were blowing up all these Christians coming out of church, and nobody cared, but God cared. Besides being a 7.8 earthquake, and right now 239 people dead and probably hundreds more, God reached down into the depths of the sea, the Arabian Sea, and pulled a rock mountain island right out of the sea during the earthquake. Great signs and fearful sights in the heavens. Meanwhile, the comet Ison is racing toward us at unbelievable pace right now and is going to be getting its closest point to the sun on November 28, 29th, which is, by the way, the anniversary of Israel being voted by the United Nations to become a state in 1947. Now, here's what the scientists are saying as it relates to the comet Ison. It says, uh, there was, today, the sun is going to be very quiet today. Another day of very solar minimum. All the sunspots on the Earth's side of the sun are quiet, and the solar activity is very low. The NOAA forecasters estimate a slim... 5% chance of an M-class flare on September the 24th and 25th, folks. But last night on September the 24th, in Norway, the compass needle swung one degree away from normal and electric currents began to flow through the ground. And for nearly an hour, local geomagnetic storm occurred over the northern part of the country and created an aurora unexpected, unpredicted sign in the heavens. Now, having said that, <clears throat> there is some information that the spaceweather.com scientists are saying about the comet Ison. They say, Comet Ison is on track to become impressive. Amateur astronomers around the world are already fo photographing the comet Ison as it approaches Mars. And in the pre-dawn sky, the comet is not as bright as some forecasters expected. But what does that mean for Ison's future prospects? Well, the answer may be found below and in this picture you're looking at in the color photo of the comet Ison as uh, it was going through the sky on yesterday. That picture's from yesterday, September 24th. 
2013. At this moment, the comet Ison is about as bright as the 14th magnitude star, which puts it one or two magnitudes dimmer than forecasted. But nevertheless, according to several experts speaking in NASA, comet Ison is still on track to become an impressive sun grazer. John Boyle predicts Ison will rival Venus during the hours leading up to its closest approach to the sun in late November. Now, having said that, folks, keep in mind that other scientists have said that Comet Ison will fizzle, and there's really nothing to get all worked up about. But I've seen other reports, scientists are saying, that the Comet Ison will be brighter than the Star of Bethlehem that was here some 2,000 years ago. Of course, that star also rose in the east. So will Ison. You will see Ison in the pre-dawn hours when you look toward the east, waiting for the sun to emerge. It will be brighter than even the illumination of the moon and will be significant because the fact that the comet Inky and the, com the new, brand new discovered comet Lovejoy from two weeks ago will also be in the frame of with Comet Ison, almost like a holy trinity. Meanwhile, folks, there are swarms of earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park. Now, I bring this up because we've just had a mega, mega quake of 7.8 that has just hit, of course, Pakistan. And I want to remind you, don't forget the 188-day earthquake cycle. It is due again. October the 6th, 2013. It is the eighth time of the cycle. We've been covering it, and on the 188th day or 189th day, it depends on what side of the hemisphere of the earth you, which hemisphere of the earth you're standing on, uh, there has been these unbelievable earthquakes. And I wrote about it in my book, uh, The Texas Blood Lake. And, uh, share with you exactly what has been taking place on those dates and how significant they were. Matter of fact, the first one was uh, on February 27, 2010. It was an 8.8 .8 magnitude massive quake in Concepcion, Chile. Notice this. It was the first one at 8.8 .8 or 188. It was also in Concepcion, Chile, the Con Holy Conception of Christ and also the conception of the 188-day earthquake cycle. It was so powerful that it literally shortened the earth, the days of the earth, by less than a second. Then 188 days later, on September the 4th, 2010, a 7.1 earthquake hit Christ Church, New Zealand. Another biblical sign, a location even, that was with biblical proportions. The first one representing the conception of Christ. The second one, the Christ is conception of the church. Uh, uh, this earthquake shook things up, broke down buildings, did some significant damage in New, New Zealand. Then 189 days later, but it depends which uh, hemisphere you were standing in, it was September 4th, or if you was on the other side of the world, it was still September 3rd, but a massive earthquake hit on that September 4th, if you will. That was in New Zealand. Then on March 11th, 3-11-11, you all remember the 8.9 mega, mega, mega earthquake that hit Japan that rattled the teeth of to Tokyo, that shook the ground for over six minutes, and then brought in a massive tsunami inland six miles and left six nuclear reactors melting down at Fukushima power plant. It killed over 28,000 people and was the third of the 188-day earthquake cycle. Then the fourth one hit on September the 15th, 2011, when the Fiji Islands was hit with a 7.1 earthquake, amazingly fulfilling the four corners of prophecy in the Bible. Then, uh, March 
late March, I forget the day when the fifth one hit, um, another quake, and they just kept going the fifth, sixth, seventh times, one in Mexico. I forgot where the fifth one was. I don't have my notes handy, but the fifth one hit, um, and then the sixth one hit, which the sixth one was in Mexico, I believe, and then or, and the seventh one was in Alaska, and it was just short of 7.0. I think it might have been 6.8. And now we're coming up on the eighth one, which is due this October the 6th. My question is, does the comet Ison have any bearing, or any significance scientifically with the 188-day earthquake cycle? Or is it just simply biblically a, uh, these signs that we're watching, these earthquakes like the one in Pakistan, the forming of this island and the comet Ison on its way? Now, I do have some more biblical dates to keep an eye on as we go in the future. October 6th, maybe nothing will happen. Or maybe we'll have another mega, mega quake of over uh, around 7.0. But uh, one thing's for sure. Comet Ison will be its brightest point November 28th, 29th, as it goes by the sun. Then on April the 15th, 2014, on Passover, there will be a blood moon. Then on October the 8th, 2014, on the Feast of the Tabernacles, there will be a blood moon. Then on March the 20th, 2015, there will be a solar, total solar eclipse. Then on April the 4th, 2015, there will be a blood moon over Jerusalem. Again, Passover. And then uh, September the 13th, 2015, there will be a partial solar eclipse. And then September the 28th, 2015, there will be another blood moon, the fourth blood moon, again, this one on the Feast of Tabernacles, but also it's a super blood moon and a lunar eclipse. What? Blood moon, a lunar eclipse, and a super moon. Three, unbelievable. That's going to take place September 28, 2015, and that's the end of the blood moon cycles. And those are so significant because uh, the last time that happened uh, was the, of course, during the Six-Day War, and the time before that, the cycle was during Israel becoming a nation in 48-49. And before that, it was, only, it was in 1492 uh, when Columbus discovered America and when the Jews were uh, kicked out of Spain. There's these very significant events taking place as it relates to Israel, as it relates to Bible prophecy, as it relates to great signs in the heavens and the forming of islands and earthquakes. We're living in a very prophetic time. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. The comet Ison is on its way, but more importantly, Jesus Christ is on his way. The last time a star was this bright, the world was notified of a coming king, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Will this comet star, will this comet signify to the world that soon the coming king is returning? Are you saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ. We're living in the last days.